Okay, and we are live. Good afternoon, everyone. It's very, very nice to see many of you joining. Um, it's my pleasure to welcome you here today at our Blue Economy webinar. My name is Marina Vendari, and I will be today's host and a moderator of the session. I work as a senior development associate at Junior Achievement Europe, and it's my utmost pleasure to welcome you all here. The topic of today is blue economy. And uh, thanks to our wonderful speakers today, we will understand and learn what blue economy is and why it's so important and why businesses should engage more into blue economy topics. I would like to start with giving a welcome word to our um, CEO, uh, Salvatore Negro, CEO of Junior Achievement Europe. Hello, thank you so much, Marina. Hello to all the participants of this another amazing webinar about blue economy that we are doing in partnership with Europe Next. So, I'm blue, a little bit of light blue, a little bit more of dark blue. What is really the blue economy? So we're trying to find out because I, we have great speakers during the next hour who are gonna capture your attention about a sector that you might not have think of. But what I'm sure is that in few years, when you look back at this exact 6th of March, 2024, you will see there is the day that I started swimming. I started swimming in a notion of opportunity that the blue economy offered me as an entrepreneur. So you will look back and remember this exact day because this is the fourth edition of the Blue Challenge program that uh, we are doing together with uh, JA Europe, together with Euronext. And the Blue Challenge program has already impacted over 1,000 young people. 1,090, to be just precise, over there. Uh, and with whom? With 184 business volunteers from Euronext, from nine different European countries, from Belgium, from Denmark, from France, from Ireland, from Italy, from the Netherlands, from Norway, from Portugal, and from the UK. So you see, wherever... Euronext is present over there. We combine the volunteer together with the young people like you, and you are becoming part of this large community of like-minded peers. And we definitely want you to become uh, the uh, cornerstones also of the alumni of uh, JA worldwide, not only, not only in Europe. So what is the Blue Economy? Mm, in few sentences, well, it refers to the sustainable use of ocean resources for economic growth, improved livelihoods, and the preservation of marine ecosystems. You normally say it's only about fisheries now. It's about fisheries, about aquaculture, it's about renewable energy, it's about tourism, of course, it's about transportation, it's about biotechnology, and more and more and more and more. When we look at the sea, when we look at the ocean, when we see it, look at this water, we do not have to only think about uh, a great place where to be, but also a great place where opportunity happens, where you as a future entrepreneurs can create and build the economies. So the significance of the blue economy uh, it's so important this day because it also affects uh, global challenges, right? We saw, we heard about pollution continuously. We will look on how we are leading the transition to a low carbon economy. And this is why you with your mini companies uh, are going to be an actor that will accompany, probably not anymore my generation, but the generation to come into this transition to be more uh, sustainable. And I know that you will do it because I see that the JA young people all over the, the all over the world, they are very open-minded, they're very, they have a lot of curiosity, they have critical thinking, or now they can do well as an entrepreneur, but also how they can do 
good by utilizing the resources that we have here. So you're really an ambassador for change. So highlights of this webinar is also that we are going to have those who were in your position before. The now are J. Huh? We have uh, Arya Yudakan, which is the World Ocean Day Youth Advisory Council member, founder of Entella, J Europe Company of the Year in 2019, and winner also of the FedEx Access Awards. Wow, that's a kind of long title for a young yeah. For a young Aria out there, huh? she did all, so many things. That's inspiring. We also have uh, F.P. Papazizi, which is the founder of Season Sensor, so Sensor, J.A. alumni, and uh, she is actually, because we captured the talent of J.A. alumni, she is now an intern at J.A. Europe in our HR and digital team. Effie uh, is also out there. So great to see that this talent is becoming an entrepreneur, but there was an active and great employee for our organization at J.A. How is that at all possible? It's possible because we have dedicated teams at Euronext and at J.A. Europe in the J.A. network. We have dedicated teachers. We have great participants like you. We have great alumni, but allow me to give a thanks and a credit to Damien Roger, the executive director of Euronext, and Clarissa De Giorgio, head of business development and marketing at Euronext, with whom we have already in a long journey this sea eh, of opportunities since we started the blue um, the blue challenge uh, together. I want to thank you as leaders at Euronext, the championing uh, uh, the combination of entrepreneurship and the blue economy, as well as the financial leaders. We had also some uh, webinars related to that but to champion how this change is happening for the next generation. So I stop here because we know that when you have an Italian, you have the sea and you give him a microphone, he can go over and sailing for a full week. So I'll stop there and I go back to Marina. Ciao Mar Marina. Thank you very much, Salvatore. Thank you very much for such inspiring and, um, and uplifting words. I invite now Damien, Damien Rogiers, the Executive Director at Euronex, to say a few welcoming remarks to our students. Yeah, thank you, Marina. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, and thank you, Salvatore, for these uh, introductory words. Uh, we are, of course, delighted to, to be already at the fourth edition of the Blue Challenge. And I would like to, to welcome all of you to this uh, webinar on the Blue Economy. Like uh, Salvatore said, uh, you're probably wondering what's behind the name, but we'll tell you about all about uh, in a moment. Um, the, re the, the, the reason why we, we set up the Blue Challenge with uh, Junior Achievement is that uh, Euronext is very concerned about preserving the seas and oceans, which, as you know, play a vital role for humanity. And from Norway to Portugal, uh, Euronext is present in around 10 European countries adjacent to the, to the North Sea or the Atlantic Ocean. And this, of course, reinforces the importance we attach to this theme. But without further ado, I I'd like to hand over to Marina. And once again, thank you all for attending and enjoy the webinar, of course. Thank you very much, Damien. Short and sweet. Thank you very much. This year, we have a special video address to our students because this year we um, have a special guest who would like to inspire you and also tell you a little bit more about why it's important to work with um, ocean literacy. I would like to um, virtually give the microphone to a little video address of Francesco Santoro, who is a senior program officer within the Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission. It's a independent body, which is part of the UNESCO. 
Um, for those who don't know, Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission uh, promotes international cooperation within 150 states around the world on the topics of marine biology, uh, marine sciences, biodiversity, um, and the preservation of the ocean. It's a great pleasure, and it's, um, it's a big honor to hear a few words from her to all of you, to all the participants of our Blue Challenge program. Dear all, uh, it's really a great pleasure to tell you that what you're doing is of utmost importance. The ocean is in danger, but the ocean is the best ally that we have against the climate crisis. Uh, I got uh, interested in the ocean when I was a little child. I was born in the south of Italy, and then, of course, uh, the ocean and the sea were always part of my life. Uh, it's, it's really important that you are thinking about creating your own businesses, uh, that you are looking at solutions, because this is what we need. To to fight issues like marine pollution and again, as I said, the climate crisis. So I uh, wish you all the best. I also invite you to think big to think out of the box because we need your creativity, we need your imagination to be able to have a better ocean for the future. So good luck to everyone. Indeed, as you see, we have a lot of spotlight yeah. on, on blue economy and we really want to motivate you to think about how to make economies not only greener, but also more blue. Um, and this is the moment now when we're finished with all the formalities and it's time to make a deep dive into the actual topic of today. So I would like to present you with the three wonderful speakers we have here today with us. Uh, we have Clarissa Di Giorgio, who is Head of Marketing and Development, as uh, Salvatore already mentioned before, and she's going to give you a little um, introduction into the blue economy, why it's important, what it is, and how to use it, how to navigate it um, when you create your own businesses. Um, then we will move on to have a panel discussion with the two alumna that we have here with us today, Arya Yurdakan and Efi Papazisi. And this is going to be a bit of more interactive and practical part because they've been in your shoes, as Salvatore also mentioned, and they will share the personal and professional insights into how, into how to integrate sustainability and the idea of the oceans within the, the business and the profitability of, um, of your startups. Without further ado, Clarissa, I think it's time to pass the mic to you and listen what you're going to say about Blue Economy. Amazing. Thank you so much, Marina, and welcome to everybody. So we'll just, uh, before we kick off the actual webinar, we are going to have a, a video that was that is being presented by David Attenborough. Of course, he did not do this specifically for this webinar. It is publicly available on YouTube. I would have loved to have gotten him to do this for us. However, I'm just going to say a few little words before we go on to the video. So it is important to note that with every breath that we take and with every drop of water that we drink, there is a connection to the ocean. Our planet depends on the vitality of the ocean to support and to sustain it. You know, however, as we can all see, you know, in the news, our oceans face major threats and it's facing major threats in the terms of climate change, pollution, habitat destruction, invasive species that are taking over certain parts of the ocean, as well as dr dramatic decrease in fish stocks. You know, these threats to the ocean are so extensive that there are some statistics out there that claim 40% of the ocean has been actually severely affected and there is no area that now has been left untouched. Ultimately, there is a consequence to us as human beings because of course we really do depend on our oceans for so many things. Humanity, in essence, is really losing out on food, losing out on jobs, and losing out on critical environmental services that ultimately a healthy ocean would generate. So in order to inspire you, 
please indulge me and watch this next four minute video being narrated by David Attenborough, which will hopefully really kickstart a lot of future ambitious projects from all of you. Next slide, please, and you can go ahead with the video. Our ocean defines our planet. It sustains us and is home to more than half of all life on Earth today. The presence of the ocean touches every living thing, no matter where it lives. The air we breathe and the water we consume are ultimately linked to the seas. The ocean drives our weather. and stabilizes our climate. Nowhere is more powerful and unforgiving. Yet more beautiful and endlessly fascinating. Yet, for too long, we have taken the ocean for granted. Our actions have pushed species to the brink and had an impact on every ocean habitat, no matter how remote or how deep. We haven't understood what the ocean does for us. The effects of the climate change have been softened by the ocean. But now we are facing the consequences. The seas are warming, rising, and becoming more acidic. It's a sobering thought that coral reefs may be lost within the next century. We all need a healthy ocean, so we must change our ways. Together with the right management, we can repopulate the seas. We can reduce marine pollution and minimize the impact of ocean acidification. The ocean's power of regeneration is remarkable if we just offer it the chance. It's not too late. We are in reach of a whole new relationship with the ocean, a wiser, more sustainable relationship. choice lies with us. Okay, perfect. So, every time I watch this video, and I have watched it numerous times, I am always inspired to do so much more. 
So let's break down what we've just seen and what really this entire webinar and this whole uh, partnership is all about. So what do we really mean by the blue economy? And Salvatore at in at the start of this session briefly went into the basics of, of what this actually means and what we are trying to do. So in essence, it really refers to the sustainable use of our ocean resources that for are for economic growth, improved livelihoods for all the civilizations that are based around the ocean, as well as preserving their jobs, as well as that of the health of our ocean ecosystems. Fun fact, which probably most of you know, but sometimes we do take for granted, 71% of the Earth's surface is actually covered by water. Out of that 71%, we know that 97% is actually salt water, and it's only a mere 3%, which is fresh water. And if you have a look at that little, uh, those two water drops towards the bottom of the screen, you will see the breakdown of the fresh water, like 2% is actually fresh water, and the rest is within glaciers on the Earth's surface, in the ground, or completely frozen. So it's quite intriguing to know that 97% is actually salt water. You know, as we saw in this video, oceans play a huge, huge role in regulating the climate. And why is that? It absorbs over a quarter of what humans uh, produce in terms of CO2, and it absorbs around 90% of any excess heat. The oceans as well are major source of food, medicine, and they create so much livelihoods for all of the coastal communities that live by the ocean. Next slide, please. So when we talk about the sustainable use of ocean resources, that's quite a big statement. So what does it really mean? What can we do? So it mainly refers to the management and utilization of said marine ecosystems as well as the resources in a way that ensures the long-term health and productivity. Why would we do that? It is to ensure that whatever we extract from the ocean, we are allowing it enough time to regenerate to continue producing for future use. Okay, so this approach helps us to balance economic benefits with the conservation of ocean biodiversity, which will prevent us from over-exploitation as well as the degradation and will support not just the current generations, but also all the future generations to come. To be able to fully sustain our ocean resources, we need to learn how to harvest them at a rate that can be replenished. This will ensure that our oceans will be healthy and not compromised for all the generations that will come after us. You know, some practices that uh, relate to the sustainable use are things like regulated fishing. So there are quotas for certain fish stocks, what can be caught, and also on the size, ensuring we are not catching the smaller fish, thus allowing them a chance to grow to full grown fish. And again, allowing them the chance to reproduce to create more fish stocks. Responsible waste management, learning that our ocean is not our back, you know, our back, back garden trash bin. We have to understand whatever goes into that ocean is not necessarily ever going to go away. You know, plastic is not biodegradable. So whatever we put in is going to be there forever. You know, and also ensuring that we protect all of the sensitive habitats. Like there is a big focus on protecting the Amazon, which is referred to as the lungs of the world, we also need to create protective habitats within our ocean to allow, you know, coral to thrive, uh, all various sorts of um, species to thrive and to have a very healthy ocean. Next slide, please. 
So let's talk about, you know, marine conservation efforts and diving deep into some of these efforts that we could do. Right? Why is conservation crucial? It is extremely crucial because it helps maintain that ecological balance as well as the health of our oceans. Because at the end of the day, we know that a thriving ocean helps capture uh, carbon and it helps to fight climate change. And many people forget that. So let's have a look and do a little bit of a little deep dive into some key conservation strategies. So as I touched on on the previous slide, creating marine protected areas, and this will safeguard ocean sections to really allow marine life to thrive. So some examples include Australia's Great Barrier Reef, and I'm not even going to attempt uh, trying to pronounce uh, that place, but it is in Hawaii. Uh, another way is protecting certain species, right? We'd like to have bigger efforts to protect endangered marine species like sea turtles, whales, various species of sharks, and also creating laws and conservation projects, which are crucial for maintaining the biodiversity. And I can give you a very good example when it comes to shark fins. In the past, when you would go to a Chinese restaurant, something that featured very heavily across the majority of the menus was something called shark fin soup. There is now legislation and even some very famous chefs like Gordon Ramsay have actually campaigned against ban um, in favor of banning uh, shark finning. So again, through all of this conservation effort, we can have change in legislation uh, with a positive impact onto our oceans and the species within it. Coral reef restoration. We mentioned earlier, and we saw some images of the Great Barrier Reef. One of the things that impacts our ocean through it getting much warmer is ocean acidification. As a result of that, coral reefs are getting bleached. So that is, they are no longer colorful and they all look white. And if a coral reef is bleached, it will then die. So having foundations like, and restoring coral uh, you know, works to revive threatened coral reefs, coral reefs, apologies, and create nursery grown coral, which can then be transplanted into the ocean to create new coral reefs. Plastic pollution reduction. We are all very much aware of major campaigns that target uh, single use plastic, plastic bags, and waste management innovations, you know, and through exercises like doing beach cleanups and diving campaigns where we clean up the seabed from all of this human uh, trash really helps in conserving our oceans even more. And a final point, and again, we've already mentioned this, is sustainable fishing. You know, conservations like the marine stewardess uh, con con conversation, uh, conservation apologies, works with the um, ensuring that there is lower overfishing and really showcasing balance between industry and a healthy ecosystem. May we move on to the next slide? So when we talk about a sustainable blue economy, as you can see, that is the infinity symbol. And why is that symbol being used? It is because everything works hand in hand. You cannot have one without the other. So by restoring, protecting, maintaining diversity, productivity, creating resilience, you know, make the natural capital upon which all of the prosperity depends on. But you can't have that without clean technologies, renewable energy, and creating that circular economy to really secure the economic and social stability over time, as well as keeping everything within the limits of this one planet we all call home. Together with those two, the final bit of all of this is providing social and economics, not just for our existing generation, but all the future generations, by ensuring we are continuing to contribute towards food security, eliminating poverty, 
increasing everybody's livelihoods, income, employment, health, safety, equity, and political stability. You name it, it's everything. Now, you may be wondering, what can you do as students? So if we move on to the next slide, we have some ways in which you can help. So you can continue your learning on marine ecosystems and getting to further understand the blue economy. By continuously learning, you're also spreading awareness on the importance of oceans and marine conservation amongst not just your peers, but also through to a wider society via mediums like social media. By continuously adopting sustainable ha habits, continuing to really reinforce that re um, reduction in single-use plastic, really supporting sustainable seafood choices, as well as minimizing carbon footprint throughout transportation choices, energy consumption choices, and any choices, to be honest, that we make in our day-to-day -day lives. We can look at participating and volunteering in things like beach cleanups, local conservation products, or even joining environmental clubs that really focus on ocean conservation. And you don't only have to think of ocean conservation, you can also think of river, uh, streams, any water body ultimately, ultimately does make its way into our oceans. So it doesn't matter how small, it all has a compounded impact. Again, you're all participating in this entrepreneurial journey. And we're later we're going to be hearing from some JA alumni on their journey. So continuously innovating and supporting or even just starting businesses and creating initiatives that really contribute to sustain uh, sustainable marine industries like ecotourism, sustainable fishing, marine biotechnology, and probably so many more that I could not fit on this page. You should also really advocate for policies that fully support sustainable ocean governance. And this is really important because we do need the support from people who are in power because it is through them and through your uh, advocation that we can get marine areas protected and we can really regulate industries that really affect our oceans. Engage and support scientific research because without research, we can never continue learning. You know, and with that research, you know, we can really begin to understand further marine biology, get a really good idea, further idea of oceanography, which again, so much of it is still unexplored, and cl understand climate science to really develop solutions for ocean health. And as a last point, you know, you are still at the start of your careers. You, know, you can always consider careers within marine finance, environmental law, or anything to do with sustainable maritime industries. Because again, all of this works towards creating a healthier ocean. And if we just move on to the final slide, I would like to conclude with a quote by Sylvia Earle, who is an extremely respected and accomplished marine biologist. Far and away, the greatest threat to the ocean and thus to ourselves is ignorance. But we can do something about that. And on that note, I will conclude and hand over back to Marina. Thank you very much, Clarissa. A lot of great points. And I think the main message to take away that we should try to go beyond what we're doing and try a little bit harder to be not only knowledgeable about ocean literacy, but also do something to, to take action every day um, to help oceans become healthier. Without further ado, we move on to our uh, panel discussion. And um, this is an exciting moment because for me, it's a great, great pleasure to hear uh, from our alumni, from uh, two wonderful alumnas who have made their mark um, on, uh, on the topic of blue economy by creating their own innovative companies. Um, we will start with a short 
presentation, a short introduction of each of you. So I'll ask Arya and Effie to just have a short introduction of who you are, uh, what your company is about, what's your journey, personal and entrepreneurial, just so that the audience uh, feels more um, feels feels more acquainted with you. Arya, maybe you start if uh, if you don't mind. Yes, sure. Uh, hi, I hope everyone is doing great. I'm really thrilled to be here among like-minded individuals who share a passion for creating a more sustainable and bluer future. My name is Arya. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur from Istanbul, Turkey. I recently graduated from university last summer in Tallinn, Estonia. So I was living uh, for three years uh, in Tallinn. And I also completed a one-year Erasmus program during my studies in Milan, Italy. Uh, I completed the JA Company of the Year program in 2019 with Entella, uh, which is our current company. Um, and we got the FedEx Access Award. Later, uh, after the company program uh, with my team, we launched JA Alumni Turkey. Uh, I was the national coordinator for more than two years. And last year I joined J Alumni Europe uh, and I was the con country coordinator for a year. Uh, I can say that my second name can be JA actually. Um, I, I am also an alum of World Ocean Day Youth Advisory Council, where I work with amazing people from all around the world to protect our ocean. Uh, and we did great um, projects to protect our environment and make a, a bluer uh, future. I completed a sustainability program at United Global People, and I was selected as 20 under 20 most promising entrepreneurs in Europe by WISE two years ago. Uh, I'm the co-founder of Entella, which I will talk in a bit. Uh, and I have two more startups, which is Travelwiser and Glowtech. Um, Travelwiser is about sustainable traveling and Glowtech is an AI system uh, which helps you uh, to get a glow in a more sustainable way. Uh, and soon I will be launching my um, new podcast. It's about mental health because we all do uh, these activism and all this hard work, but it's also so important to maintain your um, mental health and not to burn out. Uh, and a random fact about me, if you can recognize it, my favorite color is blue. Uh, and if you want to connect with me uh, after this uh, webinar, please do so. And with this QR code, you can go directly to my LinkedIn. And if you have any questions uh, or later, if you have any questions, you can always connect with me. Uh, next slide, please. So I will talk a bit about my company, uh, Entella. Um, let's start with the facts. So every year, 8 million tons of waste products are thrown into the sea. And if this continues, the amount of waste products littering the environment will be more than the number of living creatures by 2050. And this is a huge problem. For a solution, uh, we found Entella uh, for the purpose of creating a cleaner and more livable ecosystem. And our mission is to clean seas, dams, and natural water resources uh, polluted by floating solid waste by a filtration system. And at the end, we came up with our product, Marine. Uh, we can go to the next slide. So you can see our product here. Marine is a solid waste product collector. Uh, shortly, I will summarize it. Uh, with the help of the diffuser pump, we collect all the waste products at sea level. Uh, they are pulled into the filter inside uh, our product by creating a circulation. The 50 micron filter prevents any sea creatures from becoming trapped inside. So don't worry, uh, no seagulls can sit and just got trapped. Uh, and when the filter gets full, an attendant is expected to take out the waste products and basically recycle. The filter inside our product should be removed and cleaned every eight hours. And our target consumers are marinas, shipyards, and piers uh, that are prone to heavy pollution. 
And currently we're working with uh, municipality, municipalities as well, and also private uh, ship owners. I can conclude like this. Wow. Wow. That's a lot to take in. That's very impressive, Aria. Really, really impressive. Also, the amount of activities you do. Um, congratulations. You're really a role model for, for many of us. Thank you. Um, Effie, please um, introduce yourself and the idea that your company is working on. Thank you, Marina. Hello from me as well. Uh, my name is Effie and I'm one of the co-founders of uh, Sensor. Before I start, I have also a small presentation where we can share with you. Uh, I would like to thank um, JA Europe and Euronext for organizing this webinar, which is so important topic for me and my team as well. And thank you to everyone that is here today sharing this same passion for protecting the blue of our planet. So yes, it's an honor being here representing my team as well, JA Alumni Con Community and the JA Europe team. So yes, if we can share the slides, please. Perfect. Um, my, our team is sensor. Sensor comes from the word see and sensor. And I will let your imagination thrive a little bit for what this product is about. And I would like to say that behind every action that we take, uh, every decision that we make and our way of thinking is one shared common vision to protect our planet. And this is the most important for us. So a little bit about our journey, how this company started. Um, before less than a year, we met JA through a course in our university uh, where we had this opportunity to come up with an idea to combine IoT technology and produce a product that it's in our preference to give a solution to um, a problem and has a positive impact to our planet. And because we are coming from Greece and we are feeling really connected with the blue and the sea, it's part of our identity, we feel this sense of duty to protect it. When we realized the negative effects that illegal fishing and water pollution has, we knew we had to take action. And this was the moment when Sinsor was born. Um, how our journey start again we participated in the startup uh, competition 2023 and we had the luck to won one online award market expansion award by the company European and then we traveled to Brussels for the award ceremony when we met JA people we met, we met really wonderful people sharing uh, the same passion for pr protecting our planet and creating sustainable and innovative solution and this gave us the motivation we wanted to continue to this uh, path. Um, then we, of course, joined the wonderful Jenny when we met the whole JA Europe team. And this was the moment when I personally thought that I would like to join also JA Europe as a member to continue in this wonderful purpose of empowering young people to chase their dreams and work towards their goals. Uh, next slide, please. As we mentioned before, there are many, many threats that uh, our marine ecosystem is facing. Ah, yes, I would like, of course, to introduce also our team. Uh, we came, we are five girls from Athens, Athens University of Economics and Business, Zeta, Evelina, Maria, and Marilia, and we are all started together. And now recently, two more people joined our uh, team to support the IT and engineering uh, part of this wonderful initiative. Next slide, please. And now I'd like to talk a little bit about the problem and the challenges that our marine ecosystem is facing. And it was the moment of realization that it's an urgency to take action. If we just look at the numbers, it's they are shocking because many thousands of people die annually through, due to illegal fishing activities or due to water pollution. Also, the very, very sad thing is that many species like sharks are in, on the verge of extinction. And uh, of course, um, I would also like to mention that the water pollution, it's one of the biggest uh, threats that the whole planet is facing and has a negative impact to both marine life, but also the global economy. Next slide, please. And 
this is the mission and the vision of Sincer, to give an end to 2 million dead feces that are killed every minute and to 10 million of tons of garbage that are thrown into the sea annually. This is shocking and this was the moment that we said, okay, we need to find a way to mitigate those threats. And next slide, please, to introduce our device. Um, we offer a value proposition to detect and prevent illegal activities, monitor water quality in real time, and all with a sense of protecting marine life, foster sustainability and circularity. And next slide. Sensor, as you can hear, is a boy, but only on the outside, because on the inside is packed with technology. It's a smart technological device in the shape of buoy, equipped with advanced sensor capable to detect suspicious movements in real time and use the uh, benefit that um, AI and cutting edge algorithms give to us to instantly alert authorities for potential illegal activities before they escalate. Next slide, please. Um, when we heard that uh, today's uh, webinar is about blue economy, we also wanted to mention that for Sensor is something really unique and that gives us the inspiration that we want to continue in towards this uh, mission because blue economy is truly a pathway to a sustainable future while it addresses environmental challenges and unlocks economic opportunities. It gives the potential for growth and innovation and of course it safeguards the marine ecosystem for the future generation. Next slide. And this is some of the photos that uh, we captured through our journey so far. This uh, last year has been an amazing year for us. We came up with this idea. JA Europe was there to support us and give us the motivation and the support we needed to continue. And what I would like to say to all of you, because I know that before less than a year we were at your position, is that you need to keep fighting and working uh, towards your goals, because if you have a mission and a vision and something that you believe, no one can stop you that than continue towards this. So, yes, this is a little bit about Sincer. Thank you. Thank you so much, Effie. It's really lovely to see how from from zero, from the beginning stage, you got to have such a success. And I really hope to see those boys uh, everywhere on all the beaches that uh, we all go in the summer too. <laughs> um, <clears throat> now, looking at the time and knowing that we don't have so much, I um, suggest we go into you know, a panel discussion. I will just um, ask some questions we prepared for Arya and Afi, and then you answer them um, briefly uh, based on your experience and, and your expertise, of course. To start, I want to ask you to describe blue economy in your own words. What is blue economy for you and why it is important? We've heard your story of addressing it, but why do you think even more startups have to be created? How um, How is it for you? Um, Adia? Yes. Uh, well, I always like to make the descriptions and um, the form in a simpler and direct uh, form rather than it's making too complicated. Uh, so that anyone can understand the concept. So in basic words, the blue economy, uh, in my opinion, is all about using the ocean in a smart and sustainable way to create jobs and make profits while also taking care of marine life and keeping the ocean healthy for everyone. Uh, it's like finding ways to make a living from the sea without harming it. Uh, whether it's by fishing responsibility, uh, using clean energy from waves and tides, or even exploring new medicines from ocean plants and animals. Uh, it's about uh, protecting the ocean while making profit. Uh, and I think investing in startups and solutions that promote a bluer economy is really essential for fostering uh, sustainable development uh, protecting marine ecosystem and securing the well-being of present and future generations. Um, ocean plays a crucial role in regulating the Earth's climate by basically absorbing carbon dioxide and heat. Um, and startups focusing on re renewable energies such as offshore wind and wave energy can help reduce greenhouse gas emissions and mitigate climate
climate change impacts. Uh, so this is really highly important. Uh, healthy oceans are essential for maintaining biodiversity and also ecosystem services uh, where startups that develop sustainable fishing practices um, are really important. Thank you, Arya. Effie, would you like to add anything to it or how, how is it for you? How do you see blue economy and how should we transition to it as a society? Yes, first of all, I totally agree with Arya's point. And speaking of the health of my team as well, we see blue economy, as I mentioned before, as a pathway to sustainable future uh, because oceans, oceans are not just a, a beautiful source to exploit, but a vital ecosystem that we need to pretend, protect and take advan the advantages that can give us to grow our economy. So creating more startups and solutions that contribute to a greener and a more blue economy is crucial because it allows us to address uh, challenges and problems and create more economic opportunities. Um, this that it's really important to understand is that blue economy has many aspects. And as we heard before, um, it combines also sustainable fishing uh, methods, ocean conservation, renewable energy, and many, many aspects. So I think that if we want to create a positive impact and see this positive change to actually happen, we can find um, a section, a sector that we think it's more relevant and closer to our uh, way of thinking, our beliefs, and try to stick on it. Um, what is really important for us, it's, yes, to protect our planet and at the same time find innovation, innovation and some sustainable solutions to commit both to protection of the planet and then to protection of our global economy and explore what the growth opportunities can be. Thank you, Afi. Thank you. Um, moving to the next question, um, you both talked about your ideas, the ideas of the companies that you came up with, but what about the path of the of this idea creation? Um, have you had trials and errors? Did you modify original idea? How would how do you wake up with an idea of creating a buoy full of technology or waking up with having a cylinder that sucks in trash from the from the bottom of the sea? Um, Maybe F, you can go first so that Arya is not always on spot. <laughs> we change you. Okay, of course. Yes, as I mentioned before, uh, we came up with this idea because we felt this deep connection with the sea. And when we realized the threats that our uh, blue of our planet is facing every minute, we said, okay, we need to find a smart, innovative, but at the same time, sustainable solution to mitigate those threats. And yes, of course, I don't think that uh, any journey hasn't uh, have their challenges and their difficulties but what I think was the key point for us not stopping is that we felt that above everything is the passion and the deep commitment to the purpose we did it for the planet we did it for creating and safeguarding this uh, precious marine ecosystem for the next generation so when at the start nobody believed us even our professors at the university didn't believe so much at the idea they said okay you can try something else but we said no we want to try and then JA came and recognized that this is indeed an innovative idea that can actually benefit the planet and the valuable ecosystem so yes that this was a moment when we said okay we won't stop there are some people that believe in us and above all we believe in our idea so we won't stop and what uh, indeed and deeply get us motivated and empowered us was that we saw in the community of ja that's something that i also like very much as now a mitaria uh, they are many people at our age, a little bit younger, a little bit older, that share the same vision. So we can exchange knowledge and we can gain from them uh, from them valuable insight. And of course, we start the idea, but at the road, we can change many things and we can adjust uh, to the client's needs. But at the end, yes, it's about the, the path and about the purpose. So of course, nothing is easy, but if you are committed to your goal, I think everything will go all right. Thank you, Af. Indeed, we're also exchanging the knowledge and the passion here with this webinar. Thank you. Arya, how was, uh, how was the idea building for you? Did you knew from the beginning, like Afi, what you wanted to create or did this change over time? So for me, I always wanted to uh, come up with an idea 
uh, with protecting the ocean. Uh, I can say that during the summer holidays in Istanbul, I spent the majority of my time on an island at our summer house where I was always close uh, by the sea and I was really liking, I'm still enjoying to swim. Uh, however, with each swim, I found myself confronted with uh, plastic bags and other pollutants. I was swimming and it was just crashing me all the uh, plastic bottles, uh, plastic bags. And I was really um, thinking at night, uh, how can I solve this problem? And uh, actually during my middle school years, I did an um, uh, ocean project aim at raising awareness about ocean pollution. And at the end of the high school, uh, I met with JA and JA Company of the Year, where I gathered with my uh, team and we researched a bit about the ocean. Um, we saw the facts um, that, for example, um, 8 million tons of waste is uh, throwing into the sea. And we wanted to pr uh, protect our ocean and we knew that we need to um, act now. So uh, we did some prototypes and of course we failed so many times, not once, not two times, but we failed so many times, but uh, we always had this motivation. Uh, and I think my and my team's motivation is coming from combining uh, our two favorite things, it's ocean and entrepreneurship. So, uh, and also we're always keeping um, ourselves um, with passion and motivation, with attending the conferences, uh, always improving ourselves. Thank you, Arya. Thank you. Uh, maybe the last question we'll embark on, taken that we really don't, running out of time very, very quickly, um, is exactly about that. It's about entrepreneurship and ocean and about the concept of blue economy. It's about um, making the economy better, more profitable by working with the oceans and finding sustainable practices. I think there's this misconception and stereotype in society somehow that, you know, you cannot be profitable doing something good for the earth. You know, you cannot make money out uh, sustainable ideas. How did you leverage that? What was the innovative approach maybe within your company to leverage that gap and actually be a successful company that, that has income and, and, and profits? Arya, maybe you, you say briefly so that then we um, move on to Afi and close off. Uh, first of all, um, there's a prejudge about it, as you said, and it's really uh, important to create awareness about it uh, because still, unfortunately, many companies are thinking that uh, you can't make profit uh, while protecting our ocean. Uh, but I think, uh, I mean, I hope so. Uh, we're a profitable company. Uh, we did some um, key things to make it profitable while um, protecting our environment. First of all, uh, we created an innovative product to address environmental challenges. Uh, and I think it's important to developing an eco-friendly product and services to meet consumers' demand for sustainability. And secondly, uh, we did renewable energy adoption. Marine is using half of its energy from solar panels. Uh, we couldn't make it 100% uh, powered with solar panels yet, but we're working on it. And thirdly, uh, creating awareness, as I said. During the pandemic, we didn't stop and we hosted ocean series on our social media uh, where we gathered change makers uh, from all around the world and tried to inspire the young generation. Uh, and lastly, I can say that we try to use environmental friendly materials while producing our products. Thank you, Arya. Afi? Yes, in the same approach, I would uh, say that in our product as well, we're trying to use the renewable energy uh, integration and to find a way uh, to use sustainable materials and promote circularity. That's why the shape of buoy, the outside of the buoy, is made of plastic that are driven out of the sea. So in this way, we promote uh, circularity. Of course, something really important is to create a, a, um, 
partnerships, strategic partnerships with people that can help and actually support you during this journey and see a way and find a way to actually gain profit. Because as I mentioned before, illegal fishing, for example, generates billions of dollars every year to illegal activities. So actually is a loss for the global economy through integrated sustainable solutions and innovative um, solutions that um, mitigate those problems. Actually, the economy gets benefit from all this. So if you find the um, right partners, uh, through this, you will for sure, for sure gain uh, profit as well. Thank you. Thank you, girls. Unfortunately, we're out of time, but it's really inspiring to see how you're fighting the stereotypes, how you're really driven and passionate about blue economy and making our lives and our future more sustainable because we all need it. So thank you very much. I wholeheartedly thank your participation, Clarissa's participation, and everyone who joined us today. The webinar will be um, shared uh, later. It's going to remain on YouTube after it's finished, so you can always come back and rewatch and find insights that maybe you haven't heard during the first time. Thank you very much for this hour spent with us, um, and we will see you during the European finals in May. Bye! Thank you. Bye.